Welcome back to your free Windows 7 training. In the last few videos, I looked at how to capture and customize a WIM image. Now that I have that WIM image, we can look at deploying it to a computer. To deploy a WIM image, first you need to boot the computer up in Windows PE. Microsoft and third-party vendors have released products that allow for more automated methods of deploying Windows. In the next video, I will look at how to use some of these tools to streamline the process of deploying and performing maintenance on WIM images. So far, I have only looked at the command line versions. Once you have booted the computer up in Windows PE, the next thing you need to do is create volumes to store the operating system and support files. Remember, WIM works on the file level, so some of the work that was done for you automatically with sector-based software needs to be done manually. Don't worry if there seems to be a lot of steps. At the end of this video, I will give you a script which automates the whole process for you. The first partition you should create is a 100 megabyte system partition. This partition holds system files not required by the operating system itself. If later on you decide to install BitLocker, software that encrypts the hard disk, this partition must be present otherwise you will not be able to use BitLocker. Microsoft has released a partition tool to create this partition later on if it was not created during the install of Windows. Having said that, changing partitions after the OS has been installed is a dangerous process. I would recommend that you always create the system partition even if at the present you are not planning to install BitLocker. The next partition that you need to create is the partition to hold the operating system. Once you have created these partitions, you can apply the WIM image to the hard disk. After this is done, the last step is to make the OS bootable. You do this by adding the OS to the boot menu. Now that we understand the process, let's have a look at how to deploy an image to a new computer using Windows PE and the ImageX deployment tool. Currently on this computer, the hard disk is completely blank. Before I can apply the WIM file to this computer, I need to partition the hard disk. Windows PE comes with a command line tool called DiskPart that is used to partition disks. Once I start the tool, I need to select the hard disk I want to work on. Hard disks are numbered starting from zero. Since there is only one hard disk in this computer, I will use the command select disk zero. With the first disk, or disk zero, selected, I can then run the command clean. If there are any partitions or master boot records on the hard disk, clean will remove them. Next, I will create a partition of only 100 megabytes using the create command. This partition is used by Windows to store information about the operating system. It becomes particularly important if you later decide to install BitLocker. BitLocker cannot function without this partition. To install Windows, you do not need to create this partition. The setup program will generally create it for you. However, I like to create it manually so nothing is left to chance. The type of partition I will use in this case is a primary partition. You need one primary partition per hard disk and you can create up to four primary partitions per hard disk. Now that the partition is created, I need to select it using the command select partition 1. Partitions start from 1 rather than 0 unlike hard disks. Once selected, I will run the format command with fs equals ntfs. The partition will be formatted with ntfs. Next, I will add the quick parameter to perform a quick format and finally set the volume label of the partition to system with the label equal system parameter. Once the partition is formatted, I need to run the command active. The active command copies bootstrap data to the hard disk so the BIOS can boot the operating system. If you do not run this command, your hard disk will not be bootable. The active command only needs to be run on one partition and hard disk on your system. 
Next, I will create a partition to hold the operating system. I will use the command create partition primary to create the secondary partition. Notice this time I left out the size option. This time, the create command will use all the available hard disk space to create the partition. Once the partition is created, I need to select it using the select command. Since this partition is the second partition and partitions start their numbering from 1, I will enter in the command select partition 2. This partition I will format with the format command, making sure I enter the type as NTFS, the format is quick, and set the label of the partition to Windows. In a moment, I'm going to apply an image to this partition. To make the process easier, I will assign a drive letter to the partition using the command assign letter equals G. When the operating system boots up, the operating system will assign a drive letter to this partition, most likely C drive. The assigned drive letter only applies until I reboot. That's it. The hard disk is now configured with a 100 megabyte system partition and the rest of the hard disk partitioned for the Windows operating system. Once I exit disk part using the exit command, I will then map a drive to my server using the command net use z colon double backslash my server name slash share name. This share name also contains image x and other image software copied from the Windows AIK. If I change to my network drive, I can now run the command image x forward slash apply with the WIM file that I want to apply, followed by the image index and the drive letter. Remember that the WIM file can contain multiple images in the same file, so you should check to make sure that you have the correct image number before you apply the image. The process does take a while depending on the speed of your computer, so I will pause the video and return shortly. You can see the process took just under 11 minutes on this computer to complete. There is one more step I need to perform in order for this operating system to be bootable. The command is bcd boot and is found in the System32 directory under the Windows directory. To use it, I need to enter in the path to the Windows directory. BCD boot will change the boot menu so this newly deployed operating system will be available when you boot. If you dual boot your system, that is have more than one operating system installed on the same computer, you can use BCD boot to add additional operating systems. The system is now complete and ready to go. As you have seen, there are a lot of commands needed to deploy an image to a computer. Thankfully, these commands can be automated by placing them in a batch file. The batch file here automates the process. At the top is the command at echo off. This switches the local echo off so that further commands are not shown on the screen. However, the output of the commands are shown. Adding the at sign means that not even the echo off command will be shown. The next command runs disk part. The slash s script tells disk part to accept a text file full of commands. The next parameter tells disk part the file name. If I open the file, you can see all the commands I used before to partition and format my hard disk. First, I select the hard disk. Next, I clean the hard disk, removing any previous operating systems and partitions. Next, I create a system partition of 100 megabytes and make this partition active. Once this is complete, I create the second partition with the remaining hard disk space and give it the drive letter of G. This completes the disk part commands. If I now go back to the image.bat file, the next command is change the drive letter to Z. My batch file is on the Z drive, so this script assumes that you map a drive to the share containing the script as drive Z prior to running the script. Next, I run the image X. In this case, I have made the file name percentage one. When I run this batch file, 
I need to make the first parameter of the batch file the name of the image file that I want to deploy. Once the image is deployed, I will run the command bcd boot to add the new install to the boot menu. Finally, I add the command shutdown with the reboot switch. This will reboot the computer after ImageX has finished running so it is ready for use. That's it! Once you deploy your WIM file to a system using ImageX, reboot your computer and get ready to start using your new operating system that has already been customized to your needs. Even with the script, there are more automated ways to deploy a WIM file. In the next video, I will look at how to automate the system even more using some tools provided by Microsoft. I will also look at some graphical tools provided by Microsoft that replace the command line based tools I have been using.